Aloha, Patrick and Sloan here again um, with what seems to be another pressing topic, um, FEMA coverage and FEMA applications. Should I apply? Should I not apply? Um, how does it work? All that. Um, so we wanted to jump into that. Um, again, you know, we're not experts in that field. We've talked to people, we've read, um, and we're just trying to interpret it the best we can and pass that along. Um, there's been, unfortunately, a lot of what I believe, you know, is kind of misinformation or a lot of gossip going around in the shelters and outside that people are scared to apply for FEMA assistance. They think if they apply, they're going to have to pay it back or they're going to have to, uh, not, or not be eligible for other assistance. If they do that, that is not the case, um, at all. FEMA, FEMA is supplemental coverage. So they're basically trying to fill the gaps on where your other coverage ends. Um, so we'll kind of jump right into that. Um, the, you know, a main requirement is this has to be, the loss has to be from a primary residence. So it had to be where you lived or where you live most of the year. Um, Sloan was able to confirm earlier, it is available to property owners and renters. If you didn't have renter's insurance, um, you can get supplemental coverage through FEMA. So literally everyone should be applying for this. Um, yeah, every, everyone apply. And we will every, touch on something later applies. that I think is driving the, the confusion. Um, you know, there, there is, and this comes later when you're rebuilding, there is a supplemental FEMA coverage that does have to be repaid. It's offered as a low interest loan long-term if you need additional money to rebuild your house. That This is not what we're talking about right now. This is, um, you know, this is loss of use coverage and temporary housing assistance. This is coverage to help these people survive for the short term here, the near term. Um, this is money that goes to you and you do not pay back. Um, so that, you know, we wanted to be clear there. So primary residents had to live there, uh, you know, owner or renter. Um, a huge classification or requirement is that there's only one applicant per household. Um, you know, so if you have two roommates that are living in a place, you could only one can apply for that address and the members of that household will have to split the proceeds however they see fit. It's up to them. And I know that's going to be tricky in, you know, in that a lot of these residences were multifamily generational. A lot of people were under one roof. Um, so there can only be one application for that residence. We do believe Ohana's being a separate address and a separate residence do count as an additional um, household. Um, we are trying to confirm that right now, but we believe that's the case. So if you have an Ohana, that would be separate. Um, so one application per household. Um, and what they're gonna do and what we're seeing is that FEMA can get you the money very quickly. Um, in you know, If you're a property owner, you should be filing your insurance claim immediately a lot of these claims are pending for a period of time, especially because we can't get adjusters um, all the things they need to close a claim and pay it out right now. Um, so a lot of claims are pending. Um, FEMA can get you the money quick um, and you can use it, right? I mean, that that's what's going on right now. People need to get into temporary housing and FEMA can start giving you money for that. A um, couple different ways they help with that temporary housing. They um, kind of had, they, they are they're setting up arrangements right now with hotels and other facilities to offer that to people. And basically, once you make your FEMA claim, they'll let you know, hey, we have something for you at X hotel for this period of time. Um, it sounds like the initial time periods are starting at two weeks. They're giving people two weeks here, and then it's, it, it you know, it's kind of up to discretion after that, or, you know, uh, obviously, Obviously, everything's evolving so quick. Um, we'll, we'll see how it is. It, it, that temporary housing assistance can go for up to 18 months. Um, so if you, you know, if you find a, a longer term place that you can get into, FEMA will cover that for up to 18 months. Um, so definitely, you know, all good things that is help and it's instant help, which is what we need right now. Um, so please don't be afraid to apply for FEMA. Um, another one thing we wanted to clarify, and this is probably where a lot of misinformation is coming. If you get FEMA aid and 
A lot of people will before you get your insurance aid. If there's a duplicate coverage, you do have to pay back whatever's duplicate, you know, whatever was covered twice, right? Yep. yep. And so, you know, obviously accounting for all your expenses through this period is going to be very important. Um, just keep track, save receipts, keep track of everything you're spending this aid money on um, because that will be the case. People are going to get FEMA money and they're going to be using it. And then your insurance claim is going to come through and they're going to be covering a lot of the same things. And you have to save that money. If you get double coverage, you have to save that money. Don't spend it. And as, as you will have to pay that back to FEMA. Um, and they will audit you. Um, and it's pretty clear. It's pretty easy for them to see. So just you got to be very careful. And I know that's why a lot of people are are nervous. But it makes sense, right? I mean, it. you know, if you're getting covered twice by two different entities, you know, obviously that's not right or whatever so yeah you, you should pay one back or or you you know you just need to be aware of that so that's that's extremely crucial um what what other questions have you been getting sloan i mean it's yeah so just kind of on the the fema recruitment um so say fema covers uh covers your rent for 18 months kind of like we were talking about and then if your insurance policy would also cover your rent that's that's a situation where you would have to pay FEMA back, yes? Right, right. So that's that's double coverage, right? Um, yeah. So you just, you know, you, you got to be aware of that. If you're getting money for the same thing from two places, um, you're going to have to pay that FEMA money back. I mean, that, that's been the main question I've gotten with FEMA that like, kind of like yeah. you said, there was a lot of misinformation, especially in the beginning. But I mean, it, it's the most important thing is is to apply for, for FEMA benefit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Just, they can get you money like, quick. They can get yes. you money you need quickly. Um, they can help you with housing. They can help you with buying food, buying your essentials. Um, so yeah, I, I think right now in this very, you know, we're we're only a week after this disaster. Um, things need to happen quickly. So I think that's that's definitely um, they're they're a valuable resource. Please don't be afraid of them. What about if say you wanted to leave the island? Is that would FEMA? obviously would, would help travel and then also setting, setting up some sort of payment for, you know, housing yeah. wherever you go as well. Yep. yep. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. I don't know if they're going to help, um, cover travel. If there is housing here, um, they may not cover your travel, but they yeah, will cover sense. your living expenses in a replacement property for a period of time. Right. They say up to 18 months. Um, and then, when your insurance claim goes through, if you have one, um, they will cover those types, you know, the, the same thing as well. Yeah. So a combination of FEMA and insurance money is extremely, extremely recommended, right? Yeah. Like that's okay. And those are, those are the two primary sources right now. Um, we're working on, there's, there's a lot of aid out there guys. So it's, it's, um, and I know it's hard to kind of sort through it all and, and what, all of it does, but um, we're trying to sort all that out and get some sort of resource. There's a lot of state options. Um, and, you know, for people who had investment properties or second home, stuff like that, there's uh, SBA loans for those people that can cover loss of use and all that stuff. So we're, we're trying to sort through all that, but we felt, you know, obviously the most important is people who lost their homes or lost the ability to be in their homes. Um, we got to get them the money and FEMA is the quickest way your insurer will, uh, will get it to you as well. But, um, yeah, don't, don't be afraid to apply.